Warning, you may see some unsafe practices and safety precautions being ignored. Make sure you always read and understand all safety guidelines that came with your tools. In other words, do not try this at home. Hello everyone, this is Terrence King. I am King Rawl on Thingiverse or King Rawl 3D on Twitter. If you've been following along, I've been uh, making my own uh, version of uh, Ben Heck's briefcase 3D printer. I've already done the machining work on most of the extruder. Uh, if you haven't seen those, uh, please go back and check out those videos. I'm essentially modifying the RepRat Pro Tricolor Mendel into a briefcase 3D printer. So I'm trying to fit this whole package inside a briefcase size box, as you were, and then you'll unfold it and uh, be able to 3D print with it just the same as any other 3D printer. Now this does have uh, three extruders with it. Uh, they utilize two Melzi boards. Uh, I have Sanguino Lolu boards, uh, which are just the precursor to the Melzi. If you are building this yourself, you can probably even go with the Melzi 2. Now, I'm finally uh, going along with this project, mostly because of the Prusa i3 Mark II, because uh, with this RepRap Pro Tricolor Mendel, uh, you are only able to get three extruders because you were only able to have three total heaters uh, with the heated bed. Now it, you could have uh, utilized this without a heated bed and had four extruders but the reason why I'm hoping to uh, get this done now is because with the Prusa i3 Mark II it utilizes a one nozzle system so you only need essentially one heater uh, for your nozzle and then it utilizes three or more extruders uh, since I'm using uh, still using two boards uh, hopefully I can modify the second board and be able to utilize all four extruders off of that and make it a five extruder system that's probably a little overkill Right now, I'm barely even using two extruders on one machine at any given point. So unless I'm wanting a uh, some dissolvable support material off of that third one, I probably won't be using that anytime soon anyways. But it's nice to have that option there. You can find these files on Thingiverse. Uh, you can go to the GitHub page, uh, RipRap Pro Mendel, for the master files. It, but it doesn't include the extruder drive. Now I believe this is a mini extruder. Uh, that's what I'm going to be calling it in this design and uh, throughout this video. But go ahead and open up the extruder drive GitHub page. Uh, download the zip files. You can just 3D print those. Uh, but since I'm modifying them, well I've already modified them uh, heavily actually to pr uh, serve my purposes. Now, one of the things that I noticed whenever I first uh, uh, tried printing this uh, as a replacement for in, uh, some of my machines was I was having trouble with the spacers, and it turns out that this spacer is the same as thick spacer. So I'm sure that uh, one of these was only supposed to have been two millimeters tall, since uh, some NEMA 17s uh, come with different, I guess you'd call that the collar size, but uh, I'm not even going to be using a NEMA 17 for this. Uh, NEMA 14s I found work just as good, uh, f uh, probably actually a little more speed, uh, but I don't print that fast and this is a Bowden system, so I, I wouldn't be printing fast with a Bowden system anyways. Uh, I've actually stretched and broken the PTF tube in my uh, Bowden extruder one time. I think that had more to do with the wall thickness of the PTFE tube than anything else. So with uh, my design, since I've uh, extensively modified these, uh, with my design there's no sense in reinventing the wheel except for the the large gear right here 
and this is my attempt to actually improve the design now uh, one of the problems that I was having with this design particular was the through hole right here it doesn't go all the way through and that's mostly because if you were to uh, 3d print this design uh, as is this creates a bridging across here and then you it starts printing your hole up top now I wanted the hole to go all the way through because sometimes whenever I was trying to round that hole or center the hole or anything like that and fit the bolt through it it wasn't staying center so I'd rather print this with supports under here than to have it bridge all the way across and fill in that portion of the hole and actually have to drill that out so I think I've widened this hole just a little bit and since it's uh, more round actually yeah it instead of crossing that right there it's it's more rounded in this design so I don't have to uh, use a drill bit or anything to drill that out as it were uh, now the reason why I got rid of these uh, wagon spokes off of here was because if I'm gonna be running a three extruder system and uh, the way I've designed uh, redesigned this I kinda wanna keep them numbered that way I don't mix them up and especially if I'm gonna be using the Prusa i3 mark 2 because the only way that you'll be uh, if you mix up these extruders uh, the only way to figure out which extruders which would be to go back and trace the wires uh, because uh, if it's just a one nozzle system then you can't just trace it back to that nozzle so what I've done is renumbered the large gears and uh, right now I've only gotten one two and three designed and I might go with uh, make the four and may maybe even the five later on you might be saying well these don't look like the numbers well let's go ahead and rotate this around to this is the position that you'd actually be seeing them is from the top position down so center this bring it up So this is essentially the position that you'd be seeing it as, and what my intended design is. So each extruder will have its own number, one, two, three, and so on if you want more extruders. Now since I'm using the Bowden system, and I haven't, I've decided to opt out of the Bowden start uh, machine piece I'm actually using the quick connect so that does away with this tongue and <clears throat> now my idea behind this is to uh, fold everything up and uh, package it nice and ne neatly so you can carry it around so of course I'm gonna want to be able to remove the extruder from the outside of the machine and pack it away on the inside so in order to do that I went ahead and did away with all these uh, mounting brackets and that does away with this hole and this hole and then this recess for this nut so that gets repackaged and since I'm actually mounting this to the box frame uh, I'm doing away with these spacers and I actually redesigned these just a little bit differently to actually hold the NEMA 14 since this is designed as a NEMA 17 so here is the completed design that I have so far I say so far because I'm not entirely exactly happy with this uh, m mainly the reason why I've utilized this design is because this is gonna help me out with another project that I'm working on and I want to be able to remove the extruder and uh, utilize it somewhere else. So the idea behind this is this is just a latch. Rotate that latch out of the way. Be able to grab 
my extruder and fold it up into the machine. So whenever it's all folded up, it'll be in here and then of course the latch will lock it in place. <clears throat> now this was modified from the spacer. Uh, it fits the NEMA 14 motor and it's uh, just a box. So the way I had designed this before was, was just the spacer right here and then a piece came up. This wall came up over here and then it had a dovetail. Then I found that kind of made it flap and loose along this seam right here right here uh, since you had all the weight of the motor uh, pulling on that seam uh, it can uh, potentially break right there so I wanted to encase the whole housing and reinforce the whole design so now let's compare what I've modified on the actual extruder body. Okay. So like I was saying, this uh, original extruder drive was designed for the NEMA 17s and I'm going to be using NEMA 14s. So let's go ahead and line this up approximately about that size. So in order to compensate for the uh, quick connect for that Bowden tube, the hose, the PTFE hose that I'm going to be plugging in, I needed to make this hole smaller. So that was as simple as selecting all the vertices and scaling them down in the Z and uh, X directions. Now since I'm doing away with the, the tongue that was holding that Bowden start in place, I had to delete that whole section. Well, let's go ahead and scale that zero X faces uh, so I deleted all those faces and then it was just a matter of selecting all these edges extruding them, select a point and combining it with that so that doing that all the way around that filled in this area right here and of course I needed this to fit the NEMA 14 motors uh, the bolt holes so all I have to do is just select all those and move them into place. And since I was, uh, this is just a mounting point right here, I, I done away with this. Actually, this whole side over here. And with this, you know, uh, remodeling something like this uh, using the vertice points and everything. See, uh, when when you use Boolean modifiers and you try to combine one shape with another, uh, it keeps the old vertices uh, from the two designs, and it it mashes them together, and but it doesn't combine them. So this, what this does, is creates extra faces where there doesn't need to be any faces. So there's two faces right there that don't even need to be there. So I went through and I extensively modified this to remove all those extra vertices.
but I went ahead and continued that along and after cleaning everything up and make sure that because well when you get those extra vertices like that and extra faces then when you put it into your slicing program and it says that it's not uh, manifold then it's usually because you got overlapping or intersecting faces or vertices or edges or anything like that. So, and that's usually how I check and make sure that that part is finished is by throwing it into the slicer uh, software and it'll tell me whether it's a good good one or not. So just just by modifying this, I move those holes. Well, I just made those edges overlapping so I gotta go through delete those all delete the edges and then make new faces so just fill that in fill that one in keep keep going fill, oop. that one can go but you get the idea uh, you, you'll end up having to go through and just uh, combine and delete all these extra vertices and faces. Alright, so you get the idea. So, I have I went through all that trouble already and cleaned up the model and make sure that there weren't any double vertices or anything like that. And uh, since I got rid of this bracket over here, then I can and move the holes, uh, the mounting holes for the NEMA 14s over, then I can just go ahead and uh, move this whole edge over here over. But that's essentially all that I've modified on this. I, I kept the small gear, maybe modified it a little bit, a little bit bigger hole. I added this latch system. These uh, these silver pieces right here, that those are just. Uh, what I use the M3 uh, bolts uh, they, they'll just thread lengthwise into this piece right here uh, this one just acts as a hinge and that just latches onto that one but I didn't have to modify much and I find that it's a whole lot the the model comes out a whole lot nicer whenever you uh, in, especially using blender whenever you can get into it uh, go into edit mode and actually see all your vertices and edges and points that you're going to be modifying. So of course this is going to take one, two, three bearings and sitting right in here is the eight millimeter piece of uh, steel that I uh, hobbed for the extruder. So that hob section sits down in here and uh, that filament coming through this hole right here the teeth just barely touch right there and it pushes up against the bearing that barely touches right here. So that's the whole idea behind this actual design. But the only thing I've left to do for this project now is to 3D print and I'll be done with the extruder. I'm only doing one right now just to get the machine working. I'm only going to install the, the one Sanguino Lolu board uh, for now. You can use whatever board system you want. If you wanted to use your uh, own board for this, then uh, you can make your own case because the, the electronics will be mounted in the case, which will also be mounted to the frame. Most boards these days come with uh, the ability to u utilize two extruders anyways. So uh, this system uh, is going to be great with the numbered system and the idea of the folding extruders. If you have any uh, critiques or questions or comments, please uh, leave them down in the comments section. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Uh, hopefully I'll be, I'll remember to put updates as I go along on my Twitter feed at kingrawl 3 d and subscribe to my channel to so that you don't miss any more progress of my build. So on to 3D printing these. Thank you.